when I was a young man, the most beautiful woman in the entire room came over. And she's always going to come over to the guy in glasses, right? So make sure you're wearing your glasses if you know your physics. She came over and she said, hey, I'll braid your hair if you solve this problem for me. So I said, okay, sure. Actually, I'm just kidding. I made this problem up a minute ago. But uh, I got this standing wave. And I know the frequency of this particular standing wave. And I know that the tube is 1.8 meters long. And I'm asked a whole bunch of questions, like which harmonic is that? And find the wavelength. And what's the fundamental frequency? And what would the fundamental frequency's natural wavelength be? Oh, dang. And what is the 11th harmonic? Dang, the 11th harmonic. So we need to get some equations. We need to know how this stuff is working. What I'm thinking, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that the length of this tube, which is 1.8 meters, let's just circle that right there. The length of that tube seems to be housing some fraction of a wave. It looks to me like in this case, the length of the tube is housing five quarters of a full wave. So I'm gonna solve that sucker for wavelength so I can do this part right away. I'll solve that for wavelength by saying that's four-fifths of L. And I'll get out, see my students sometimes just leave calculators sitting in my room. It's incredible. So I'm going to do uh, 0.8 times L, which is 1.8. And I'll find that this wavelength here is 1.44 meters. And now I want to ask you about the harmonic it is. And I'm not asking which overtone it is, because it looks to me like it's the third overtone. I see the, uh, oh gosh, sorry, the second overtone. <laughs> Ah, all right. So if I start like that, that would be the fundamental, right? And then the sec the first overtone has a node here, and it'd be up and then down and then like that, and up and then down and then like that. Okay, and then um, this one seems to be slightly more complicated than that. So I'm going to call this the second overtone. That's fine, but it doesn't tell us which harmonic it is. What I know about this is it's the first harmonic, and this guy right here is the third harmonic, because these guys apparently haven't only have odd harmonics. This guy right here is the fifth dang harmonic. So that means if we're using this crazy equation, somebody told me once an equation, let's see if we can use this scrap of paper right here. The equation says that the frequency of the harmonic is the harmonic number times the fundamental frequency. So that's fine. Have we already identified that it's the fifth harmonic? Awesome. Have we already identified lambda? Awesome. Now we want to know the fundamental frequency. Gosh, it sure would be helpful to know the regular frequency. Oh, we do! We do, we do, we do! The, um, the nth frequency, we know that f Five is 789 hertz. And I'm trying to find the fundamental frequency. So I'll say that F1 is Fn divided by N. So that's 789 hertz divided by the harmonic number. I called this the fifth harmonic because we were like first, third, fifth. For some reason, even harmonics can't exist in here. I guess that's because one end is closed and the other is not. So it's a little bit wonky. We're going to divide this sucker by five. Wow, this is five times the frequency of that right there? I suppose so, it's got five times more wave in it. This is five quarters of a wave. That sucker right there is just one quarter of a wave. Let's get you a number for the second problem. Seven, eight, nine, divided by five, boom. 157.8 hertz, 157.8 hertz, don't it? Ow, that was a bad pun. That pun hurts. Watch this. What would lambda be at the fundamental frequency? That's not a hard problem at all. Lambda at the fundamental frequency looks like it would be, well, five times different from lambda at the fifth harmonic. Does that mean that lambda is going to be bigger or smaller? This looks like a much, much bigger wave because I can only fit one quarter of it here, but here I can fit five quarters of that tiny little fifth harmonic wave. So it looks like lambda at the fifth harmonic is going to be, oh man, that lambda at the fifth, oh gosh, lambda at the fifth harmonic is 1.44 meters. Sure. But they're asking me, I mean, I'm asking you, <laughs> about lambda one. Let's see if we can get a relationship between lambda one and lambda n. Oh boy. We said that lambda one had to be bigger than lambda n. So I guess it's going to be lambda n divided by n. Is that fair? Does that work with this other equation we developed, which says that frequency one is frequency n divided by n. Gosh, no, it certainly doesn't work. We want this to be bigger! 
Remember, lambda one's supposed to be bigger than lambda five, so we're supposed to do n times lambda n. Ah, now we put these two equations together, now we'll have some business. I know that lambda one times frequency one ought to be the speed of the wave. So let's try that out. It says lambda one times frequency one is, well, it's n times lambda n times frequency n divided by n, which is lambda n times frequency n. I guess this is telling me that the wavelength times the frequency at any harmonic is gonna be the same number, which is just gonna be v, independent of the harmonic number that we're actually investigating. Would you hang up that thing, please? Thanks, that's really annoying. Awesome. Um, that is nice to know. So we'll take this equation right here and we're trying to find lambda at the fundamental frequency. And I guess I just need to take lambda one, which is then gonna be five times lambda five, and lambda five was 1.44 meters. So I'm gonna take 1.44 meters and multiply that sucker by five. Dang, 7.2 meters. That's a heck of a lambda, 7.2 meters. Wow. Good, and they wanna know the 11th harmonic. So when they ask a question like this, are they asking for the wavelength of the 11th harmonic? The existence of the 11th? Is this an existential question? What is the 11th harmonic? And no, that's not asking that really at all. What is the 11th harmonic is asking, what is the frequency of? The frequency of the 11th harmonic. In order to find that, I'll say frequency of the 11th harmonic is 11 times the frequency of the first harmonic. That's kind of cool. Frequency, oh gosh. That's the beauty of using these harmonics. So I just need to take 11 and multiply it by the fundamental frequency. Remember, I'm not going back to this original frequency that I found, the, um, uh, the 789 hertz. I'm using the fundamental and basing everything off of that. Now, I could have gone about this in a lot of different ways. There are a lot of relationships here, but I'm just gonna make this straightforward and I'm gonna say 11 times 157.8 hertz and I get 1735.8 hertz. My final observation is that it seems like the higher harmonics are always going to be higher frequencies and correspondingly shorter and shorter wavelengths. I guess that's the bell. Goodbye.